Howdy, y'all. Welcome back. Thank you for being here. Let's get into something really out of the ordinary, because I know a lot of you are not familiar with the area of Lancaster, Pennsylvania. This being my hometown, I've decided to dive into the Old World series of videos by looking at Lancaster. Today, we'll look at over 150 pre-1930 images of Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. Now, what stands out to me and what you'll see in these photographs is throughout the entire county, not just the city of Lancaster, but the county of Lancaster, it appears that there were electric trolleys that really united the whole landscape. And these trolleys went through different indigenous sites. With Lancaster and the greater area of Pennsylvania being one of the earliest representations of what we would call kingdoms of the indigenous people, with Lancaster itself being the main kingdom of the Susquehannock Native Americans. Now, I have a ton of other videos on the area of Lancaster on the Susquehannock Native Americans to show all of the research, the hours upon hours, the days of research I've done in finding information on these topics for you. Looking into these photographs, we're diving into the Lancaster Historical Society as well as private museums found throughout the Lancaster area, including Wheatland. Today, we will look through the absolute oldest photographs of the streets of Lancaster. As I've mentioned previously, nearby Lancaster City in the greater Lancaster County area, closer to Columbia, was the final capital or primary city of the Susquehannock indigenous people. Some historians think the Susquehannock were an offshoot of the mound builders. As I've mentioned in my previous videos, the Susquehannock, due to their size and abilities, were often hired by early colonists, usually through trade, to protect the new colonial settlements, and sometimes even given credit for helping to build out the earliest renditions of these towns. However, by the late 1600s, we're told the Susquehannock were driven from the lands that they helped build and protect by the United Tribes of the Iroquois, which is interesting because the Susquehannock are said to be an Iroquois speaking people. In the year 1851, the vast and old world looking Lancaster prison was said to have been built. However, the Lancaster prison from 1851 replaced the earlier Lancaster prison, which was a site of a very large tragedy for the Susquehanna people, wiping out the entire population. Now, we have the Fulton Opera House, and this is the oldest continuously operated opera house in america what a lot of people don't realize even people who are from lancaster is that the fulton opera house was actually constructed out of the original jail of lancaster where this tragedy occurred the susquehannock invented the conestoga wagon with this wagon being used to conquer the west conestoga is a french word which is synonymous with susquehannock these native americans also created or pioneered both the Lancaster rifle, which is commonly known as the Kentucky today, and the Susquehannock also introduced vast tobacco cultivation to the early pioneers, leading to that plant becoming one of Lancaster's major exports. The Susquehannock retreated to their largest settlement, their fortress in Lancaster, after continued battles with the Iroquois. Here, for many years, the last of the Susquehannock lived peacefully, with their town fortified, said to be built of stone, surrounded by large wooden palisades, and containing at least one cannon, as described by John Smith. As more European settlers arrived to Lancaster, tensions began to grow between these new settlers. 
including a Anglo-Saxon group known as the Paxton Boys and the Susquehannock indigenous people. Eventually, these Paxton Boys grew weary of the peaceful Susquehannock living so close to Lancaster, possibly in fear of the Susquehannock's physical prowess, or possibly in desire of conquering their lands along the Susquehanna River. At some point in the mid to late 1600s, raids began on the Susquehannock City, which is located in what today makes up Columbia. The Susquehannock City was finally raided by the Paxton Boys, which led to the final Susquehannock indigenous people being brought into the Lancaster County area and being hidden inside the early Lancaster County prison for protection. However, more Paxton Boys were able to find out about this secret plan and the result was mayhem. The final Susquehannock indigenous people were removed from Lancaster entirely. This untimely event ultimately ended any knowledge that we have today of the Susquehannock, with most of their history being myth or legend. Furthermore, the Lancaster prison that followed the one that was built in 1851 was said to be based off the Lancaster prison of England as a massive old world castle style fortification. However, this fortification appears eerily similar to what the Susquehannock Fortress looked like on early maps. As we dive deeper into the oldest photographs of Lancaster County, one thing to keep in mind is throughout the 1700s into the 1800s, Lancaster was one of the largest and most populated cities in the entire country. We have inventors and creators and scholars that were coming out of Lancaster left and right, including Thaddeus Stevens and Robert Fulton, who is credited with creating the steam ship and the submarine we also have technological advancements that seem to arrive to lancaster around the same time that we have 
large portions of what we would call the Pennsylvania Dutch or the Amish, the Mennonite community that arrived to the area. As we will see in a little bit, we have a massive bridge that was built in Lancaster and a majority of this bridge is credited to these Pennsylvania Dutch. But what I want to talk about first is this transit system that was put in place in Lancaster, a transit system of electric trolleys, which is far beyond the norm of any city really of the time period. We have electric trolleys that ran for hundreds of miles throughout Lancaster County, seemingly connecting all the major neighborhoods, the amusement sites and the small towns in one trolley system. One that seemed to be an amalgamation or a unifying factor in all of these different factions which resided in Lancaster. In some neighborhoods in Lancaster, the trolley was so convenient, it was in the location where you would see sidewalks today. A quaint and personal luxury to the residents of Old World Lancaster. With the trolleys allowing for railroad level speed and reliability without the need for fuel. So we have railroads running on coal, running on steam, running on these different fuels. But at the same time, in Lancaster specifically, we also have electric trolleys which ran through a majority of these landscapes, also seemingly on the same tracks as the railroads, making it even more interesting to understand how these electric trolleys were being powered. What astounds me the most is the sheer amount of trolleys that we see throughout the greater Lancaster County area. For example, we have trolley systems in the early 1900s up in Mount Gretna and in the mountainous areas of Lancaster County, but we also have trolleys, for example, in Ephrata, which seemingly reached or connected to the other trolley lines of the greater Lancaster County. electric trolley system, the vast system that ran throughout Lancaster County, including throughout the wilderness and throughout really every amusement, every area of interest, they began to be phased out in the early 1900s. And by roughly 1930, the only place that you would find an electric trolley still in use would be in the city of Lancaster. However, at one point, these electric trolleys seem to interconnect this entire landscape. It was a fascinating time for technology, to say the least. After this point, we only truly see the electric trolley being showcased in the city of Lancaster, with the focus after these years becoming on creating the roads, paving the roads, and making way for the automobile making way for the machine that ran on gasoline, which would help to fuel the economy. But before that, there was an abundance of free or at least very cheap electric trolleys that connected Lancaster. And we have photographic proof of that in this video.
We also have beautiful sites like this, known as Penn Square, quite literally the ancient center to Lancaster, around which the famous roundabout sits today, and above, a statue known as the Soldiers and Sailors Monument. All of the ex-patents aside, the curious case arises when we look at creators like Robert Fulton, who claimed so many inventions as his own being famously founded from his workshop in Lancaster. This included the steamboat, the submarine, and other inventions or patents that later became known as ex-patents. We also have a multitude of massive almshouses, or insane asylums, which popped up in Lancaster in the mid to late 1800s, only to later become the famous hospitals of Lancaster, such as St. Joseph's. We also have the largest silk factory in the world, known as the Steli Silk Mill, which led the country in manufacturing for decades, but now sits as a massive, empty, red brick dilapidated building, which has been empty since before I was born. Lancaster served for one day as the temporary capital of the United States of America, seated at the courthouse on September 27, 1777, with the old courthouse being chosen due to its tunnels underneath in case of a quick escape needed during the American Revolution. From 1777 through the War of 1812, Lancaster served as Pennsylvania's capital, and the U.S. Census reports that from 1800 to 1900, Lancaster ranked among the nation's top 100 most populous cities in the country. The first long-distance paved road in the entire United States went from Philadelphia to, you guessed it, Lancaster, and became known as the Old Philadelphia Pike, a road which I travel almost daily. By the year 2000, Lancaster was one of the All-American City Award winners, naming it as the most American city in the country. We have so many feats of engineering in Lancaster. Just to remind you, one of the single greatest, we have the longest covered bridge in the world up until that time, which was built across the Susquehanna River at a length of over one mile in the year 1812. 
Just for reference, a covered bridge or an Amish or Mennonite style bridge is a bridge that appears like a barn. It has a roof, it has a design, and to imagine one that stretched over one mile, which was said to include piers and a rooftop lounging area, it only makes this concept even more fascinating. When you think covered old world bridges, it's basically, like I said, unique masonry. As we see with modern and much smaller, much shorter covered bridges in the areas of Pennsylvania and Ohio today. The bridge in Lancaster was enclosed on all sides, but the exit and entrance creating a tunnel of sorts. This great bridge over the Susquehanna in 1812 was built with piers so boats could pass underneath or park and enter the bridge from below. While this original bridge is long gone, if you look into the water next to the current Susquehanna Bridge from Lancaster to York, you can still see the stone platforms from over 200 years ago. note this bridge played a critical role in the civil war stopping the confederate troops from being able to move further north into pennsylvania with the burning of the columbia wrightsville bridge as it was known at the time being considered one of the northernmost battles of the civil war the world's longest covered bridge was reduced to rubble a multitude of effort was made in early America and even in pre-1776 history to try and connect Lancaster, the Susquehanna River, to Philadelphia. As a Lancaster native and someone who was born here, I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments about the history and these photographs down below. Thank you for joining me on another escapade into the old world history. Thank you for appreciating the work that I do, for viewing all the images that I take all of this time to find and share with you. And thank you for being here to share your thoughts and ideas because without you, we would have no basis to continue this research. It's because of your thoughts your ideas, your motivation, that all of this is possible. Thank you all for sticking with me and watching this video about my hometown, one of the most important towns in American history. When we look back at the 16th and 17th centuries, a town that was once the capital city of America for one day and the capital of Pennsylvania for over a decade. This is an amazing city to be from, amazing to go back and visit, and is one of the most beautiful places that you can go. When you're in this city, you see the red brick, and you can tell that everything is so ancient, everything is so amazing, that it has an atmosphere, it has an aura about it, and I just love being there. Now, for all of you familiar with the old world research community and 
if any of you out there feel like you'd want to support the channel i would appreciate that very much you can do so right here other than that i want to thank you all so much for helping my channel which is just me by myself accessing all these different websites trying to find all of the hidden information that i can to share it with you and most of all to find photographs that you can't find anywhere else i'm diving into this to help teach everyone about the things that have been hidden or taken from us not necessarily nefariously but a lot of the times the narrative points to that being the case looking at my hometown i have a lot of pride here and i just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart i will see you on the next video cheers y'all